Hey friends, today we're continuing our deep dive into the Hulu show, The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. I'm Leah Carey, a schmecks and relationship coach, here to explore how pop culture reflects our understanding of relationships, gender, communication, intimacy, and more. With the Mormon wives, we're specifically looking at how faith and purity culture impact people's ability to experience healthy schmexuality. Keep in mind that reality TV features real people, but their words and circumstances are highly edited. So my comments are based only on what we see on screen which way may or may not be a true representation of any person's actual words, thoughts, or actions. Of course, I would love to know what you're thinking, so please drop a comment and let's get started. Macy, one of the other moms, is sitting down with Taylor and they have this conversation about Macy's um, Schmick's life with her husband. How are you and Jacob? I feel like Jacob never initiates like sex. You talked to him about it? Not really like in depth, but I feel like maybe I should. If you have followed me for any length of time whatsoever, you know what my response to this is going to be, which is, yeah, you should, because our partners cannot know what we want and what we're desiring or craving or missing unless we tell them. There is this weird mythology that has grown up, I think, partly um, in response to like the Disney princesses about like, if they really love me, then they should just know and I shouldn't have to tell them. That's not actually how any of this works. Every one of us has a different body with a different configuration of nerve endings and specific desires. So our bodies all experience touch differently. Our brains all crave different kinds of touch and scenarios. There is no way that another person could know without us telling them or giving them some indication what it is we want. Now, for some people, the way that they give that indication is during the act itself with lots of, you know, sounds and movement and noises and words. And if that is what, if that's what you do and that works for you, great. But for a lot of us, that doesn't actually really work. And there are lots of reasons for that. Not least of all, those of us who grew up as little girls learned very early and very well that we're supposed to just accept what is given to us and not complain because it is our job to take care of everybody else and not make waves. Mostly our job is to take pleasure in giving pleasure to others that can make it really difficult when we grow up into adults and we're in the bedroom to ask for things because we've literally been trained out of asking for anything. So this is a very common issue. I liken it to going into a restaurant, the waiter hands you a menu and says, what would you like? And you don't actually say anything out loud. You just sort of glance at them and you hand the menu back to your waiter and you expect them to bring you exactly what you want and somehow fault them if they don't bring you what you want. That, we would never do that in a restaurant. In a restaurant, we go in and we say, I would like this steak. I would like it medium rare. I would like, you know, this cut and this size. And um, I would like this topping. And I want my baked potato with these things and hold this. And like, we are so careful about telling the waiter exactly what we want in a restaurant. We need to start bringing that mindset into the bedroom. Our partner is like that waiter. They're just waiting for instructions. And until we give them, they don't know what to do. All right, so let's keep listening. 
what do I do? I'm like, should I like put on lingerie and walk around the house? But that's still me initiating it. Do you that's know what I mean? True. I feel like yeah. I want him to like want me all the time. Should I just put on lingerie and walk around the house so that he at least knows that's what I want? Okay, that is a step in the right direction to begin signaling what you want. But Macy says very clearly that doesn't satisfy her need because what she wants is for her husband to want her without her having to initiate or give signals. So she needs to tell her husband that. Otherwise, he doesn't know. Just like those of us who grew up as little girls got messages, so did people who grow up as little boys. And if we're talking about the Mormon church purity culture in general, our little boys are their little boys, the, the little Mormon boys, the little purity culture boys are getting these messages that are saying just as strongly sex is bad for you as well. You can't touch yourself. You can't touch anybody else. You shouldn't think those thoughts. You're going to get hair on your palms. You're going to go blind. And so that can lead a man to be nervous, to initiate. You can't tell somebody for the first 18, 20 years of your life, no, 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 don't do that. That's bad. That's sinful. You'll go to hell. No, bad, bad, no. And then flip a switch and say, okay, now you're married. Go for it. Have fun. Be ready 100% of the time. Know exactly how to please your partner. That is simply unrealistic to an extraordinary level. I mean, it's mind boggling. And so what happens, and I do work with a lot of clients who come from purity culture. And what I hear them say is, I got married 15 years ago, or I left purity culture 10, 15, 20 years ago, and yet I still feel scared to engage in schmexy experiences because I'm still, even with a spouse, even with somebody who purity culture would tell you it's okay, even then I still have all of these thoughts in my head about it being sinful. So if you're wanting your partner to initiate, but your partner is also dealing with some internal shame and blockages, nobody's going to really be making the first move. Everybody's going to be waiting. And then people are going to feel dissatisfied. People are going to start to feel resentful. Everybody's going to be waiting for everybody else and thinking, oh, well, they just must not be interested in me. I must no longer be attractive. And so what Macy needs to do is say to her husband, I want you to initiate. I want you to show me that you want me. I don't want you to wait until I have given you the green light. And then they can begin to negotiate how that's going to work for them. But at least she has to put it out there in order for him to know what she wants. So wait, I want to hear about you and Dakota. Okay, so now let's focus on Taylor. She is the one who's sort of at the heart of the whole swinging scandal. She divorced her former husband. And then she started dating, almost immediately started dating this guy, Dakota. And she says, we've had drama and trust issues kind of right from the beginning. And she's talking to Macy about what that means. Does he have a lot of trust issues because of your past? He does, and I do, like with yeah. him. So we have trust issues because we started off on a rocky start. Girls are on my TikTok saying, oh, he was just like with my roommate last week, or now I'm like, I don't know if I can trust you, you know? You kind of like the drama in the relationship, huh? No, I don't a like the drama. A little bit, a little. You like the, like, a little bit of jealousy. I like that he's jealous. Because you can tell how... that he, like, cares. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about jealousy. Uh, this actually reminds me a lot, for those of you who watched Love Island USA over the summer, this reminds me a lot of Leah talking about how she likes things just a little bit toxic. That I was going to end up here with the guy who came in and made out with every single one of my friends. <laughs> I would believe you. <laughs> You know I like him a little toxic. <laughs> it allows her to feel like things are a little unstable, so there's always going to be some excitement, and I'm not going to get bored. Here, Taylor is saying sort of a variation on that, which is, I like it that he's jealous, because that's how I know that he cares about me. Okay, let's real talk for a minute. People can care about you without jealousy. I am not saying that jealousy is bad. Jealousy is perfectly normal. And, you know, there are a lot of people out there who talk about ethical non-monogamy and they're like, well, you, you can't be jealous. You have to feel compersion. Conversation for another time. That is horse pucky. Jealousy is an innate feeling. We, we don't have control over that. It is a feeling that comes up when our brain is telling us that we don't have something that we want or we don't have something as good as somebody else has. It's just a feeling. It doesn't have, it is morally neutral to be jealous. There is no, um, what is the word, um, cosmic baggage. That's not the word I'm looking for, but we'll go with it. There's no cosmic baggage that comes with that. What does become problematic is when we allow our jealousy to then take over our thoughts and our words and our behaviors. Toxic jealousy will look like, no, you can't have friends who are, you know, the opposite gender if you're heterosexual. You can't have other females as friends because I feel threatened by that. I'm too jealous. That causes a problem because you're now dictating to your partner that a full half of the population is no longer allowed to be on their radar kind of as people. Eventually you take this to its natural end point and it ends with, you know, Mike Pence saying, I can't have a meeting with a woman unless there's another person in the room because God forbid something might happen. I'm going to make this full screen again. So feeling jealousy is absolutely fine. Again, totally morally neutral. Asking other people to make enormous changes in who they are and how they behave, that's where things begin to become problematic. Let's make up a scenario. Um, so my partner has a friend who is female and I start to feel insecure about it. Now, my partner and I are non-monogamous, but let's just pretend that this is somebody who I'm starting to feel really threatened by. It's okay for me to have those feelings of jealousy. And it's even okay for me to express to my partner, I am having some feelings now. Not you're doing this to me, but I am feeling this way. And so I wanted you to know because we're in a relationship and I want there to be clear communication between us. What would not be okay is for me to say, and therefore, I never want you to see her again. She is off limits. No, I do not get to dictate who he sees or how he behaves when he sees those people. I get to say, here are my boundaries. I'm having a hard time with this. I don't want to keep you from seeing this other person, but I do want you to know that I am feeling uncomfortable. So my preference would be that you don't see her more than once a month. Is that something that you would feel comfortable with? 
And then we can have a negotiation. Maybe the agreement is, okay, I'm only going to see her once a month for the next six months while you sort of sort your head out around this. I'm not going to allow your discomfort to completely derail me, but I am going to be understanding of your feelings. I am going to have some generosity around your feelings because I don't want you to feel badly because I love you. So that is a way to navigate jealousy in sort of a healthy way. This kind of jealousy where Taylor is saying, yeah, I want him to be jealous because that's how I know that he cares about me. How is that demonstration of jealousy, of you can't see them because that makes me jealous, any more loving than what I just proposed, which is, I know you're having feelings, and so I want to work with you through those feelings so that we get to a place where you're not feeling unstable, where you're not feeling like things are topsy-turvy all of the time. To me, that sounds more loving. Moving toward a space where you are both feeling stable, secure, loved, not threatened, that to me sounds like the kind of healthy, stable relationship that I want to be in long term. The relationship that says, I only know you love me if I can make you jealous, that is a level of instability that I don't want to live with. And that many of the people who I work with do not want to live with either. Okay, so let's pause it there for now. I will be back with another video in the next couple of days. I'm Leah Carey, Schmecks and Relationship Coach. Don't forget to leave a comment if anything in particular has struck you. If there's anything specific that you'd like me to look at in future videos, like, subscribe, do all the things, and I will talk to you again soon.